All right, praise God. How good it is to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. But we love you because you first loved us. And we are grateful for that love. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. We pray that you'll be in our midst as we worship. Have your way during our service. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. Brother Steve, you come on. And good evening. Well, take number 12, we'll turn to page 48. Turn over to page 55. Thank you. 
and turn over to page 66. The king is coming. A lot closer today than it was yesterday. Take your Bibles and turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 3. This morning we looked at verse 17 and verse 18. We're going to back up one verse of Scripture and read probably what is the most favorite verse in the Scripture. Notice what the Bible says in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have 
everlasting life. And from that scripture, I made the statement many times, I'm a whosoever and proud to be one. Amen. Lord, we're grateful for the reading of this great verse of scripture. And I pray that we'll be able to gleam from it the truth that we are a citizen of heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Friends, listen. If you are a born-again Christian, you are heaven-bound. The last sermon that I heard Billy Graham preach, he made the statement in that message, I'm going to heaven. And it's not going to be very long. And I'm proud to say that I'm a citizen of that great city. And it wasn't but a few days after that that he crossed from this life to the next. In fact, he made the statement, one day soon you'll read that Billy Graham has died. He said, don't you believe a word of it. He said, I'll be more alive that day than I am right now. But if you're born again, you are heaven bound. Now, I don't know about you, But that's really encouraging to me to know that one day soon we'll enter into a great city. It's encouraging news to every person who has believed in Jesus Christ. Now a person that has believed in Christ gains two things the instant they accept Christ into their life. First of all, they gain eternal life. Now, I don't know how you feel about that, but I'm thankful <clears throat> that I'm going to live forever. Eternal life. One day soon, you'll read my obituary. But don't believe a word of it, because I'll be more alive that day than I am right now. The second thing that we gained when we get saved is an everlasting home. A heavenly home. In this message that I'm going to try to bring to you, we're going to study the assurance of salvation, the everlasting heaven, and how we're to live our lives daily. Now, first of all, as I think about our text verse of Scripture, it gives to us the assurance of eternal life and a heavenly home. Many think that they had something to do with gaining their salvation. But the fact is, you did absolutely nothing to warrant your salvation. 
You did absolutely nothing to earn your salvation. You did absolutely nothing to achieve your salvation. You did absolutely nothing that was worthy of your salvation. Your salvation, if you're saved, is a gift from God. We like to get gifts, don't we? The greatest gift anyone could ever receive is the gift of salvation. And his salvation is extended to you by his mercy and by his love. The Bible says God so loved the world. And I tell people all the time, you can take the word world out right there and write your name. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is the author of our faith. But not only the author, the Bible also teaches me that he is the finisher of my faith. Nothing, listen, nothing can undo what he's done. Now there's a lot of people that tries to undo it. But there's not one thing that can undo what God has done. Think about that. The Bible says that we can be encouraged in John 3.36 that he who believes in the Son has everlasting life. So the assurance of eternal life in the heavenly home is guaranteed to those of us who are saved by the grace of God. Secondly, one day soon, we all will be absent from the flesh and present with the Lord. Death is not an end point for the believer, but it is a transition into the direct presence of the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 52 and 54, Paul, the apostle, called it a change. We move from temporary fleshly homes into a glorified body to our eternal home, heaven. One day, we'll have a body like Jesus' body. Now, the third thing that I want you to see is that we're going to have a resurrection. Many of the New Testament writers frequently spoke about our Lord's coming resurrection, which made it possible by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you and I too shall be resurrected. 
The writer of Hebrews states that the resurrection of the dead is one of the elementary principles of Christ in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. Jesus made it very plain. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. And then my favorite passage of Scripture, John eleven twenty six. I live by it. And he that lives and believeth in me shall never die shall never die. I believe it. He followed that statement by saying, Believest thou this? And I believe it with all of my heart. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Paul taught we've been crucified with Christ. So shall we be raised from death as Christ was raised. Romans 6, 5, 8, 9. The fourth thing that I want you to see in our text verse of Scripture promises us that we can be overcomers. Those of us who are saved by the grace of God have five wonderful promises coming to us. There are five things that I want you to see. First of all, we're going to be able to eat fruit from the tree of life. You find that in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. The second thing that we're going to be able to do is to receive the crown of life. You find that in Revelation 2, 10. The third thing is that we'll be clothed in white garments. You find that in Revelation 3, 5. The fourth thing that the Lord's going to give us is a new name. Revelation 3, 12. And the fifth thing that we're going to receive is to be able to sit with Jesus on his throne. Revelation 3, 21. Now let's look at our heavenly home for just a moment. In John's Gospel, chapter number 14, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, listen to this. I will. Not I might. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. That's going to be heaven. Amen. 
Heaven is a place where there'll never be another sorrow. Now, we all have faced sorrow from time to time. Next week, we will celebrate Mother's Day. But I won't get to celebrate with my mother. Many of us will not get to celebrate with our mothers because our mothers are in heaven. I can't celebrate with her next week, but oh, one day, one day, I'll celebrate with her again. I was very sorrowful when she left us. When Mama Prita left us, we were very sorrowful. But heaven's going to be a place where there's no sorrow. We won't cry over our lost loved ones anymore. Heaven is a place where there's no suffering. No suffering. I'll have feeling in my hands again. My wife constantly says, you've got a lot to be thankful for. Don't worry about them hands. But then she don't have to live with it. I do. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. I know you live with me. But one day, they'll be healed completely. And I say all the time, I wonder if I'll ever get my strength back. I made that statement in Sunday school this morning, Mike, you said only God knows. Only God knows. In heaven, there won't ever be any suffering. In heaven, none of us will ever have pain again. That knee will be well. In heaven, we'll never doubt. Have you ever doubted? We all have doubted at one time or another. But in heaven, there's no doubt. In heaven, there's no confusion. In heaven, there's no misunderstanding. In heaven, there's no miscommunication. What a wonderful place heaven's going to be. And we fight and try to stay here. Fight to live to stay here. Heaven's going to be so much sweeter. But I don't want to leave here one day sooner than God would have for me to leave here. We all ought to live in the hope of heaven. Billy Graham said that. We all ought to live in the hope of heaven. Heaven ought to be at the forefront of our thinking. It ought to be a lively hope 
that's in us. And this hope works in three ways. Three. Three ways. First of all, it ought to help us to live a renewed with a new desire to abstain from all evil. Secondly, it ought to give to us a new desire to witness to others about Christ. And thirdly, it ought to fill our hearts with great joy about the future. You know, we look at the news and we hear bad news all the time. It's time to quit looking at the bad news and start looking at the good news. And the good news is that Jesus is still in control. He's still in control. Now, we don't watch a lot of news in our house. Because if you're not careful, that bad news will get off on you and cause you to live negatively. God doesn't want that. He wants us to focus on the eternal. Now the person who has their eyes on a heavenly home and a heavenly reward is a person who's going to want to do everything within his power to abstain from all evil and to embrace what God calls good. There's a new focus, a new consecration on the things of God and a simple stripping away from anything that might distract us from it. As I bring my message to a close, the person who has an active living hope about heaven has an exuberance of joy. And the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. There is delight in knowing that God is at work and we shall one day soon experience the fullness of his work in us. There is joy in knowing that we will always have a tomorrow in which to love and serve our Creator. Are you assured of that tomorrow? If not, friend, you can be. All you've got to do is come to Jesus. And he'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Father, we thank you for the message of the hour. I don't know, Lord, if it touched anybody else, but it sure touched my soul. And I'm thankful that you promised us a heavenly home that if we would just believe and trust in you, that we could be a whosoever and believe and live forever. Thank you for that promise. Have your way during this time of invitation. In Jesus' name, amen.